Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how to create a complete API layer from client to server using the least amount of boilerplate code you can write. I'm using my low code API project, which I've published to this public GitHub repo. Now, I've done several episodes on API layers. There's episode 11, creating an API layer. Episode 12, creating a generic data manager. And episode 16, data access, which brings everything together. This episode is going to be more like episode 16, except I've added some new things and tweaked the repository a little bit. In short, it's all grown up. Even though the low-code API approach allows for all CRUD actions, including search, it's completely extensible. You're not going to believe how easy it is to get API access up and running. And that's coming up right now, right here on All right, for this project, I'm going to use my repo, low-code API. If you just go to github.com slash Carl Franklin slash low-code API, you can read the readme, which has the instructions for doing exactly what I'm going to do with you today. And it also includes this database script, pubs.sql, which I got from the Microsoft documentation, the sample databases. So the very first thing we're going to do is create a pubs database. I've got the SQL Server Object Explorer open here in Visual Studio. We're going to say add new database, call it pubs. And now I'm going to right click on it and say new query. And this is where I'm going to load up that SQL script. So I've got it in the clipboard. I'll just paste it in there. And then I'm going to click this little green arrow there to execute and create the database. And that's pretty much all there is to that. You can keep the script if you want in your project. You don't really need to, but there it is. So now I've got a pubs database with all my tables and data and everything. So the next thing we have to do is generate the models in the DB context. So that brings us to the project. I've created a brand new Blazor WebAssembly hosted application called Low Code API. But here's the thing, you can do this for any project that you have, whether it's a Blazor server application or a Blazor WebAssembly application. Uh, I chose to use a WebAssembly application because that's where it makes sense to have an API. So uh, what we're gonna do is add, we need to add a couple of projects here. And this is all in the readme. You can just copy and paste this stuff in and just because I'm going to build it. You don't really need to build it, but I'm going to do that. And now we can generate the DB context in the models. So you're going to open a command line and go out to the server project, or if it's a Blazor server application, just the application folder, and going to execute this command right here. Now, this requires the .NET EF tool. So if you get an error, there's a, a command that you can execute, and it's in the readme, and it tells you how to install the .NET EF tool. So we're just going to go ahead and press enter on that and see it does build, but I always feel better just building the project. Okay, and then we get a warning because what it's done is it's put the connection string inside the DB context file. If you go look in the pub's context, you can see there's that warning right there. All right, so you can use what you know about configuration to put that string somewhere else. But for now, it's just in our local DB. There's no passwords or anything, so that's where it stays. Now the models. It generated models, but it put them in the server folder. So what I'm going to do is move those, and you've seen this before on Blazor Train if you've been watching any of the other API stuff move those to the shared project. Therefore, I have to delete the one that's in the server project. But here in the models, we need to change the namespaces from namespace low code API server models to low code API shared models, because that's where they are. So I'm copying that into the clipboard, press Control H, and 
I don't know if you can see that, but there you go. We're going to change server to shared wherever this namespace uh, statement occurs in the entire project, which is in all the models. There we go. Save all. Uh, now I can get rid of all of these. But there's one more thing, and that is in the pub's context now, we need to change this using statement to look at the models. Now this is just namespace goo. You can put them anywhere you want, of course. This is way, the way I like to arrange things in my projects. I have the models that are gonna be shared between the API on the server, the API controller, and the client. I like to have them in the shared project for obvious reasons. But the DB context doesn't need to be anywhere except the server project. Now let's talk about the required files. And again, if you've seen any of the Blazor Train stuff that I've done before on, uh, you know, iRepository, it started with the generic uh, uh, repository with Mateus Carvalho, and it's sort of morphed into the current um, incarnation, which is low code API. So, what we're going to do is add to the models folder here in the shared project a new class. Well, it's a really an interface, but iRepository, and this is really the center of the universe for what we're doing here. This uh, has everything that we're going to need to do basic CRUD operations. So here's a get all, and here's a generic get that uses link to specify a filter and an order by clause, and also will include properties. This is good. And then we have basic insert, update, and delete. All right, that's it for iRepository. Now we're gonna use this on the server and we're gonna use it on the client, but let's stick with the server for now. And up in the data folder, we're going to do an implementation of iRepository for Entity Framework, and it's called EF Repository. So here's EF Repository, and we're using generics here, so it's of an entity and a data context. All right, so this is really cool because whenever we want to have a repository that we can use to access Entity Framework, then on the server side, then we just new up uh, AF repository, passing in the data context in the class, and boom, everything works. So check this out. We've got our get all. We've got our filtered get, which does all this magic right here. And then we have our insert, our update, and our delete, all just boilerplate entity framework code. And of course, you know, if you want to do something else, you can just modify it in one place. And that's the beauty of this architecture. Next, we need a couple of classes that we're going to use to return uh, data from endpoints, from controller endpoints. So let's go to models and we're going to add two classes here. One is called API entity response. And the other is called API list of entity response. Starting with API entity response, this takes an entity, which is just a class. So this would be, you know, author, discount, employee, whatever. And we have a success field, true or false. Did it work? Did it not work? We have a list of error messages, may have happened. And we also have the data that's being returned, which is just uh, the type of the entity. And list is exactly the same, except that data is now an I enumerable of T entity. That's the only difference. And so we have a, a list of T entity or just a single T entity. And that pretty much covers everything that you want to do with uh, iRepository. Now next, and here's the thing that's new in low code API. We're going to make a base class for controllers. That's right. We have a base class for EF controllers, controllers that are going to use the EF uh, repository. So this is called EF controller base. And I added it to the controllers folder in server. Of course, you can put it anywhere you want. It's a base class that inherits controller base, but it also requires two types, one for the entity, one for the data context, which guess what? We've got an EF repository 
of the same entity and data context, which gets injected. So there you go. So now as long as that is a service that can be injected, uh, it's going to happen right there. All right, now let's move to the client because we're going to use the iRepository on the client as well. Create a services directory and add to it uh, a class called API Repository. Now the only squiggles we're going to see here is because we haven't uh, added the Newtonsoft JSON package, but let me just go over this stuff first and then we'll talk about that. So API Repository of T Entity implements the iRepository of T Entity interface. And you can see we have these three fields here, controller name, primary key name, and HTTP. Again, we did this in the complete data episode. So here, when you create the API repository, you're passing in the HTTP client, usually the one that gets injected, the controller name, and the primary key name. And now we have methods for the entire interface that call out to the controller and do the dirty work. So right here, I'm going to click on JSON convert and install the latest version of Newtonsoft JSON and everybody's happy. So here's get all. Now the get I have no implementation for, and that's because there isn't a way to uh, serialize these things, the expression and the order by all of these things. I haven't found a way to serialize those and Here's what we're doing instead. We have a get by value, which gets a single T entity, and you pass the property name and the value. And in the controller base, we've got a get by value. And we also have search by value, which returns an enumerable or a list of entities looking at the property name and the value. The EF controller base is really where this happens. So check it out. Here's get by value, property name value. We're getting a property, right? This is a, a, a property info from reflection based on that property name. And then right here in my uh, link query, I'm looking at the where clause here where ID property get value of X, right? To string to lower is the value to lower. So this little where clause right here covers a host of sins and just allows us to pull out um, an entity where the value of this property by property name is what we have passed in. And also search by value does the contains, you know, where get value x to string to lower contains value to lower. And that returns all of the matching entities. All right, now let's actually get rid of all this stuff. And now let's add an author's controller. Let's actually implement a controller. Isn't that beautiful? The author's controller gets injected with an EF repository of author pub context. And then we're turning around and we're calling the base class, uh, which is EF controller base, and passing in that repository. And then we're also keeping a, a reference to it right here because guess what? You may want to add your own uh, endpoints that aren't in the controller base, right? Maybe they're not even in iRepository. You just want your own endpoints. So there you go, controller, easy peasy. Now we add to startup in configure services on the server side what we need. First thing is to add the DB context itself. And that we only have to add once. Now for each entity that we want a repository for, we add those. Turns out we only have this one, one for authors. But no matter how many you have, you can just add them here. If you want one for publisher, right? There you go. It doesn't matter. You can just add as many as you want. Now let's go to the client side and let's implement a manager for the API repository in services. So add class, authors, manager, and it's as easy as that. We create an authors manager which inherits API repository of author, 
uh, we have an HTTP client here that is injected, and we're turning around and calling the base class, which is API repository, with the HTTP context, the name of the controller, which is authors controller, so it's just authors, and then the primary key field, AUID. In program CS, in the client, we need to add this line right here, services add scoped authors manager to give us access to it in our blazer pages and guess what we also need a couple of using statements in the imports razor client services and shared models and now it's time to take over finally our index page which we do all the time here on blazer train and here it is let's just run it first we have our authors manager we're injecting that we'll run it first and then i'll go over the code so this is all the authors, first name and last name. And let's talk about search. If I search for some common character like S, so now any author with the last name that contains S is returned. Something a little less common, maybe Y, or you know something more specific, WH, Johnson White. Now, Here's another thing I can do. I can get a single author by last name. So let's put green in here because Marjorie Green. And it's also case insensitive because we did that too lower. All right, so that's really cool. I have the ability to uh, just pull out records based on whatever criteria I want. And that's because we're calling it by property name and value. Uh, now I'm going to add an author here. I'm just going to press add author and you can see Carl Franklin was added to the bottom here. So now we've done get all, get by value, search by value, insert. Let's do an update. Let's uh, change my last name here. Boom, changes there. There it is. Okay, now let's do a delete. And it's gone. And of course, you know, you can update these guys too. Uh, it's not relegated to just records that I add. So there you go, full CRUD operation with very little code. I mean, yeah, we added some, you know, support classes. But look, on the client side, we've got this. On the server side, we've got that. That's pretty awesome. All right, I told you I would go over this code. Let's do it. Here's our uh, search by name. I've got an input bound to a string field, search name. Um, here's search by last name, and then get by last name. Here's a button, show all, get all authors. And I have this function, can I add an author, or add a author, and uh, that uh, shows the button to add an author. And so I can only add Carl Franklin if it's not there already. And now I have a select which shows my list and on change author selected. In the option I have the value is the primary key and then the, the, the value that gets displayed is first name space last name. And now down at the bottom if the selected author is not null, right, author is my selected author, now I have code to update and delete, and finally an error message. So here's my list of authors, here's my selected author, my search name, my error message. And let's start with initialized async, I call it get all authors. Here's get all authors. I'm just calling authors manager get all, and setting my authors list to that. Otherwise I have an error message. Pretty simple. All right, now let's uh, let's start at the top. Here's delete author. It's pretty simple. I've got my delete. I pass author. I want to look for the original in authors based on the ID. And if it's not null, I'm going to find that author in the list of original and remove it. And now update author, same idea. We get the original from author ID. And if that is not null, we're going to get the index of that. I'm going to get an updated version of it from authors manager update. And if it's not null, I'm going to update it in the 
authors list by index. Authors index equals updated. Here's my search. Calling search by value on the manager, passing in the property name. This is great. I get to do this at the UI level. That's where I want to define what I'm searching on. I don't want that in the boilerplate. So I'm searching by author's last name, and there's the value. And pretty much self-explanatory. Get, same way. Get by value, author's last name. And uh, if I get a result back, just clearing my author's list and adding that result back. Um, when an author is selected in the select, I pull it out from the author's list. And you can also see that I'm just to exercise all the methods in the manager, I'm calling get by value on the author ID, right? And I can do that too. I can use the author ID property just as well as I can use the last name. And here's can I add a author, which I should probably change to and to be grammatically correct, but it doesn't matter. Because let's go down here to add author. When I add author, I'm creating a new author with just some dummy data, right? And then I do an insert and I add it to authors. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to allow that uh, if it's already there, because then it'll just fill up our list with Carl Franklin's. And who wants that, really? So if it does not exist in authors, then I return true. Otherwise, I return false. And folks, that is all there is to it. I hope you have enjoyed this culmination of my research into minimizing code that is required when building out an API layer. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. Now this is where you come in. Do you see any ways that low-code API can be improved? Go ahead and submit a pull request. I'll read it just after I walk the train to punch tickets. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train.